ever gotten sucked into a game and like completely lost track of time? You know that feeling where you're learning, but it doesn't even feel like learning because it's just so engaging. Oh, absolutely. That's the yeah. holy grail of education, isn't it? Totally. And that's exactly what we're diving into today, gamification and game-based learning. You guys send us a ton of questions about this, so we've got a mountain of research to unpack and figure out what actually works for bringing that aha moment to the classroom or, you know, any learning environment, really. And it's a field with so much potential, right? Mm -hmm. But like anything that gets trendy, there's some healthy skepticism, too. For sure. Like, is this just about turning every classroom into some giant monopoly board? Well, a little friendly competition never hurts, but it's not quite that simple. I think the first thing we need to do is get clear on the difference between two distinct approaches, gamification and game-based learning. So gamification, that's more like, hmm, think of it as adding spices to a dish you already like. Okay, I'm following. You're taking existing activities, okay. right, and you're sprinkling in those game elements like points, badges, leaderboards. Say you're trying to get your students to, I don't know, turn in their homework on time. You can gamify that by turning it into a race to the top of the leaderboard. I like it. So instead of just like lecturing about the importance of deadlines, you're making it fun, maybe even a little competitive. Exactly. Now, game-based learning, that's a whole other beast. That's the feast itself, not just the seasoning. Okay, so instead of just gamifying a quiz on fractions, you'd have kids playing a game where they actually have to like strategize with dividing up resources, learning those math concepts more organically. Exactly. Now, using games in education isn't new, right? Mm -hmm. But the term gamification itself is relatively recent. It really emerged around like 2010, and then the formal research really took off from there. Interesting. So pretty new as a formal field of study. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But here's a fun fact for you. Elements of gamification were actually used by the USSR Army way back in the day. Really? Yeah. Think about it. Badges, rankings, all that. They were using those things to motivate soldiers and enhance training. Wow, that's wild. So fast forward to today, we've got all this research coming out, but why should we care? I mean, does slapping a game onto something automatically make it educational? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It's not about just adding games for the sake of it. The real magic happens when we understand how games tap into our natural motivation. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Games, they're inherently engaging. They present challenges, opportunities to master something, even that social connection piece. Yeah, it's that feeling of, ooh, I have to see what happens next, but in an educational context. Exactly. And that's what can lead to much deeper, more meaningful learning. There's actually research showing that when game-based learning is well-designed, it can help students understand complex systems in a way that just memorizing facts never could. They're learning through experience. So it's not just about making learning fun. It's about actually leveraging the power of games to enhance understanding. Okay, so this all sounds incredibly promising, but I'm guessing there are some potential downsides too, right? Like, what about that initial excitement wearing off? Ah, the dreaded novelty effect. You've hit the nail on the head. Just like that shiny new gadget loses its luster over time, the same can happen with games in the classroom. So how do we avoid that? Thoughtful design is key, and that's what we're going to really dig into. So thoughtful design is key, got it. But I'm really curious to see how this plays out in the real world. Do you have any, like, juicy case studies you can share? Oh, tons. One that comes to mind is a study that looked at STEM classrooms, specifically 5th and 8th grade math, high school biology, and get this, even a high school AP physics class. AP physics, huh? That's some next level stuff. Yeah. So what were they trying to figure out? They wanted to see if using game-based learning could actually boost student performance. You know, like if it moved the needle on those test scores and stuff. Makes sense. STEM education, definitely a place where we can always use some extra engagement. So what did they do? Were they having these kids like dissect virtual frogs or something? Close. They had them playing games like order ops to practice order of operations. And yeah. even Pandemic 2. You heard of that one? Pandemic 2. Rings a bell. Is that the one where you like create a virus or something? Yeah, except in this educational version, they're learning about how diseases spread. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So did it work? Did the kids learn anything? Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. Across most of the grade levels, fifth grade math, eighth grade math, even high school biology, they found that the games actually did have a positive impact on how well the students did. Awesome. But you said most of the grade levels, what happened with that AP physics class? Did those kids just like 
ace everything without even trying? Well, not exactly. That's the thing about research. Sometimes it throws you a curveball. They actually found that the AP physics students didn't see the same benefits from the game-based learning. Huh, that's unexpected. Any idea why? The researchers thought it might have had something to do with the specific game they used, a simulation called electric field hockey. Apparently, it might have been a better fit if they had used it as an introduction to the concept of electric forces rather than a tool for practicing something they were already pretty familiar with. So it's like, even with a great game, timing is everything. You can't just throw it in at any point and expect miracles. Totally. It goes back to that idea of aligning the game with your learning objectives and the student's current level of understanding. Yeah. But speaking of alignment, there's another study I wanted to mention. This one from the University of Central Florida, where they looked at a gamified learning platform in a business technology course. Oh, cool. So not just K-12 then, what they find in a higher ed setting. Okay, so they use this platform called UCF's Materi Widgets. It's got all sorts of games like matching games, flashcards, crossword puzzles, even one called Last Chance Cadet. Sounds intense, right? Last Chance Cadet, I'm intrigued. Did the students like it? So that's where things get a little tricky. They made participation in the gamified activities completely optional, like it didn't affect their grades or anything. And okay. guess what? Nobody sure. bothered. Pretty much. The results were mixed. They didn't find a significant difference in performance between the students who used the gamified platform and those who didn't. That's a bummer. So even with all these fun games just sitting there, something was missing. Seems like it. The researchers figured that without any real stakes involved, students just weren't that motivated to really engage with the material. Makes sense to me. It's like those loyalty programs, if there's no actual reward, I'm probably not changing my shopping habits. Exactly, and it highlights a really important point. Motivation matters. You can have the most brilliantly designed gamified system in the world, but if it doesn't tap into what drives the learners, whether that's good grades, recognition, or just the feeling of accomplishment, it's not gonna have the impact you're hoping for. So we've got one study showing some real promise for game-based learning in STEM, with the caveat that timing is crucial, and another highlighting the importance of motivation when it comes to gamification. What's the big takeaway here? It definitely feels like there's more to it than just saying games are good for learning, end of story. Like there's a real art to using them effectively. 100%. I think what these studies are showing us is that whether we're talking about gamification or actual game-based learning, we need to be really thoughtful about how we approach it. Right. It's not like we can just like throw spaghetti at the wall and hope it sticks, or I guess in this case, throw games at students. <laughs> so what are some like key takeaways here? What should our listeners be thinking about if they want to bring this into their own classrooms? Well, if I had to pick one thing, it's design, design, design. You can't just slap some points on a worksheet and call it gamification, you know? Right. Like, congratulations, you did your multiplication tables. Here's a sticker. Exactly. <laughs> and on the flip side, you can't just grab a random game off the shelf and expect it to magically align with your curriculum. So it's got to be intentional. Absolutely. The game or the game elements you're using, they have to support those learning goals you've set. And remember that AP physics class we talked about? Timing matters, too. A game that falls flat at one stage of learning might be just the ticket at another. It's about finding the right tool for the job, basically. Yeah. And we can't forget about that motivation piece we were talking about earlier. So important. You really need to know your audience. What makes them tick? What gets them excited about learning? A leaderboard might work wonders for one group of students, while another group won't respond better to, say, collaborative challenges. Or maybe they're motivated by earning badges and recognition. It's like, you need to speak their language motivation-wise. 100%. And last but not least, don't underestimate the power of data. Mm -hmm. This is true for any teaching strategy, really, but it's especially important with games. Track what's working and what's not. So, like, actually pay attention to whether students are engaged or just going through the motions. Exactly. Are they mastering the material? Get their feedback, too. Yeah. Use all of that information to refine your approach over time. So it's about being data informed, not just data driven. Yeah. We're not robots. We have to use our judgment and experience too. Couldn't have said it better myself. This has been such a fascinating deep dive. We started out all excited about the potential of games in education, and now we've really gotten to the nitty gritty of what it takes to make them work. So for those of you listening who are thinking about using games in your own classrooms, remember, it's not about the bells and whistles. It's about creating an experience that's truly meaningful for your students. 
That's all the time we have for today, but we'll be back next time with another deep dive into the world of education. See you then.